Welcome with me, Pastor Tanya Berenja, and we are being thankful as we are slowly but certainly preparing to go into the holiday season. Yes, the children are writing exams and everyone is preparing for the rest after this very um, challenging year that we had. And last week we looked at Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, our reason for being thankful that um, we have been given a son and he is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Everything that you and I need, we found in Jesus Christ. And therefore, we need to be content within our lives. And the re remedy of being content is being thankful. So we looked last week at Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 that says it is healthy to be content. But envy, in other words, always wanting what others have, it will eat you up. And Ecclesiastes 6 verse 9 says, It is better to enjoy what you have than to always want something else. So last week we saw that always wanting more, is uh, it's got a very negative effect on your life. Firstly, uh, it brings more fatigue because you're more tired when you are not content with what you have and always want more. Secondly, it's expensive to constantly keep up with the Joneses, right? And then thirdly, it causes more anxiety, more worry, more conflict within our lives. And therefore, many families and marriages are under a strain, not because Satan is fighting against a marriage, but because husband and wife is discontent with where they are at. So therefore, we need to have a heart of gratitude with everything we do, because it will affect uh, the effect of wanting more, you know, and it will just cause more dissatisfaction and more dissatisfaction and you will never be happy. It's a cycle and it continues and it goes on and on and on. But with being thankful and with being content comes also understanding that God has a plan for our lives and knowing that we will be completely satisfied and fulfilled as we step into God's plan. Why? Because we are walking in the design that we were created for. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, we see the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So get out of the familiar. Get into that land where I'm going to lead you, God says. So he gives Abram this wonderful promise, but he also gives instructions first, the requirements in order to step into this awesome plan. And if we are children of faith, we share in the same blessing that Abram had, it will also be so for us as well. And God is promising him, he says, I will bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Um, isn't that amazing? You know, the plan that God has for your life is so big that you and I don't have the time to chase haters. You don't have the time to watch your back. But God says, I'm going to do that for you. Why? So that you can continue in the plan, that you can focus on the plan that I have for your life. It says in, all, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed, but it's conditional. There's an instruction. And you know, some of us, we want God to show us the whole plan that he has for our lives from the beginning to the end. But he says to Abraham, no, go to a land I will show you. And this is what God does with us. He doesn't show us everything. But as we go step by step walking in humility, because this is what God uh, Fulfilling this plan of God in our lives require you and I need to walk in that humility, which means there's a dependence on God every day, step by step. Every day we decide I'm going to do the things God's way. I'm going to lean on God's understanding. I'm going to follow His footsteps. I need to depend on Him in all things. And as you walk in that obedience every single day, God unfolds this plan in front of you. And one day you stand back and look back and you say, wow, look how this unfolded in my life. So when we look at God's plan, there are four things I want to share with you. Number one, God's plan is always better than our own. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Well, in my own life, I'm a testimony that every time where I followed my own plan, 
it led to destruction. But God's plan is so much greater and it's complete. The mere fact that you are alive says that God has a plan for you, not just to get by, not just to survive, but to prosper you. God wants to do you good. God wants to do your family good. God knows the end from the beginning and He directs your footsteps. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've already made in the past. All you need to know is where you are at. You know, because where you are at, God comes from there. He directs you. And he's standing in the future already. He sees you are a father of nations, a mother of nations. He sees already the blessings he wants to bestow upon your life. And from that perspective, God is telling you, take this step. Be obedient in this. This is why he has uh, given us his word. And as we take the small steps of obedience, we see how God comes and unfolds this wonderful plan within our lives. So we, you know, t sometimes we tend to make uh, decisions based on our past. Based on the fact that we've been victimized or abused growing up where we got stuck in the past and we think God can't use us because of our disadvantages and our trick record. But that's not God. God comes and says, no, see where you are at and then, then know where you're going. We all want to become like Christ, right? So know where you are going and then from there God comes and he says, I will guide you. My plan for you is better. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So this is number one. God's plan is always better than our own plan. And this happens through uh, number two. God's plan requires total obedience. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your paths. So this plan that God has in store for you is a plan that only God can navigate you through. And uh, which means that the instruction He gives you is untainted. And you don't have to add anything. And Abram, you know, he tried to help God like many of us does. And God came and he said to him, leave your family, leave your country, leave your relatives. And we see in Genesis 12 verse 4 what happens. Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, but Lot went with him. Who told Lot to go with Abram? God didn't tell Abram to bring Lot. No, Lot was his nephew. And Lot gave Abram a lot of difficult times, a very difficult time, a lot of struggles. You know, Lot gave him a lot of struggles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12 and 30 we see to such a degree that God wasn't even listening to him. And the Hebrew meaning for the name Lot is a veil, a covering. So as long as Lot was with Abram, he couldn't see the promises of God. As long as Lot was with him, you know the Bible says his herds were growing, his crops were multiplying, but he couldn't see God's full plan and potential for his life. And you know, so which means we cannot compare ourselves to others. And we should be careful for who we allow within our lives. Is there a lot within your life? You know, and if there is, you're only going to scrap the surface of the plan that God has for you. Only after Lord departed in Genesis chapter 30 verse 14, the Lord came and he said to Abraham, you know, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward and westward. He said, for all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. But when did this happen? After Lot had separated from him. And he says, I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. And there are many people that are not arising and taking the promises of God because there's a lot within your life and you are blinded and you cannot see the promises. You cannot see how faithful God is in your life. And you know what you do, the decisions you make, it doesn't just affect you. It affects your family. It affects your descendants. God had to withhold uh, these promises because Abram was disobedient. So God's plan, plan require complete obedience, total obedience to the word of God, where God is number one. So therefore, who are the lots in your life that causes you? Maybe it can even be yourself. You know, past experiences in your life that are keeping you from the promises that God wants to fulfill within your life. But then thirdly, we see that God's plan requires a godly perspective. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We did this series and this sermon a couple of weeks ago. A pure heart, which means we are dependent on the Lord. It affects the way we think, the way we process, so that we can be accurate. 
Because here's the thing, even as a child of God, even though you can be righteous, you can still think and uh, process like the world. And this is what happened in the life of Lot. You know, he needed to decide on the future for his family as um, he and Abram separated. And he had a choice. Uh, what is he going to choose? So he lifted up his eyes and he saw all the plain of, of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. And this was now before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go towards the world. And it says that, that Lot then chose for himself the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated from each other, Lot and Abram. But here's the thing, he made the calculation out of his own education, out of his own beliefs, out of what he perceived was good. He looked at the water, he thought, wow, this is going to be good, you know, for the animals, this is going to be a good place. But he miscalculated because the place, though it looked good on the outside, on the inside, it was a wicked place. It was a wicked city that he has chosen. And many times we make good decisions, but it's not necessarily God decisions. Because he chose for himself, and the land that he chose was the land which God was going to destroy, Sodom and Gomorrah, because of the wickedness. But, uh, you know, where Lot looked, he did not consult God. And we will save our families from a lot of heartache and pain, you know, when we just stop and pause and ask God, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do here? And he had no consideration in God when making his decisions, which means it is impossible to have an accurate foresight without having godly perspective. And the decisions that you and I make, you know, it influences our family. The decision that Lot made, because he went to a place that was so wicked, his wife turned into a, a pillar of salt when God destroyed this land. His daughters that were brought up, their thinking were altered, and they process like the processing of their thoughts was like that of the world, even though their father was righteous. See, we can be righteous people, but even if we do not have a godly perspective, we will be just like the world. And we will not be able to really walk into that plan that God has for our lives. So it is important for us to constantly, on a daily basis, to come before the Lord, to, before we make big decisions, and really that weight of your life to come before the Lord and bring it to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I really trust you with this decision that we make. So yes, God's plan is greater than our plan. Absolutely. But it requires, number two, uh, obedience absolute obedience from our life and that obedience when we become obedient in the word of God that we will have a godly perspective of what the word of God says and not a worldly perspective and then lastly when we look at God's plan for our lives we see that God's plan is all about the empowerment of people the empowerment of others Therefore, when we have a godly perspective, we will see that, you know, uh, everything that God uh, wants to give you, that wonderful plan, it involves people. And therefore, we need to be accurate because there are nations on the inside of you waiting to be birthed. Because there are nations that are following you as you follow God to seek the face of God in the littlest choices that you have to make. And if God puts you at a place, He will prosper you, He will multiply you, and you will be a blessing for others because of this great investment of Jesus Christ that He made on the inside of you. He invested so much in you, He doesn't want to afford to lose that. So He's going to make sure that you become a success, but not on your own terms, not your own plans. We need to be in God's plans. And then you know what, like I said, number four, God's plan is about the empowerment of others. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Build each other up. This is the word of, that God instructs us to do. We are called to empower. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what is the one thing that's constantly in God's mind? It's people. God's plan will never exclude people. And God's plan for us is never about self-preservation. It's always about others. The empowerment of others. And this is why in the church with us, we are always empowering you to be able to empower others. You know, God does not want it to have. It's not for him about the money, about the house. He doesn't care. You can have lots of money. You can have big houses. But here's the thing. Are you going to use it to be a blessing to others, to empower others? Empowerment means that you carry 
First of all, your children on your shoulders. You don't stand on your children's shoulders because that will crush them. But empowering means that I want you to do better than I have done. And that's a plan that God has got for your love. And, and it is always about other people. In John 15 verse 12, he says, This is my commandment, Jesus speaking, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. For who are you laying down your life for? Right? When it comes even to your family, not just to be as a mom a good housekeeper, but as a mom to bring the presence of God into your house. As a father to bring in the presence of God in the guidance and direction you give to your children. You know, are you, are you laying down your life for them, even at work, wherever you are? And we can only empower others through the power of Jesus Christ. That's the only ability that we have to empower where we can really give without expecting anything in return. In other words, it means I can give freely. I don't have an agenda because I know that when I walk in the plan of God, that I'm also walking in the provision of God. And God will provide for me whatever I need. Therefore, I can give to you without expecting anything in return. And Jesus is our great example. He laid his life down unconditionally. He a sacrificial life. He sacrificed sacrificed his own life and we sing to Peter 3 verse 9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance if we are willing to step into God's plan where we're loving God, loving people, we love God by loving people, we love people by empowering them. Therefore, we need to be submitted somewhere where we can be empowered and constantly filled so that we can give to others. Now, when we are stepping into God's plan, we're stepping into that agreement that we will empower other people. And as long as we are empowering other people, we know that we are in the perfect will and plan of God for our lives. And therefore, there are times in God's plan where you are going to go through difficulties. And Jesus went through the same. You read it in, in Hebrews 12 verse 2. He says, but for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Sometimes you're going to have to endure a couple of things because God needs to work on your character. And he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. This is where your strength comes from, from the blood of Jesus. For it is impossible for us to walk out God's plan faithfully without Jesus Christ. And this brings us to one of the seven places where Jesus shed his blood in Luke chapter 22, verse, verse 42, where he said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. He says, if there's another way, if there's another plan, if there's another strategy, please show it to me. But nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your will. Uh, I might not want to. I might not feel like I want to do it into, go into this direction. But nevertheless, not what I want, Lord. Let your will be done within my life. And we see there in verse 43 that an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. You don't need strength when you do your own will. But you need strength if you are uh, in God's plan for your life. But God promises to you, His promise for you is that if you decide, no matter what comes, come rain, come sunshine, come difficult times, come abundance, I'm going to do God's plan, God will strengthen you. And it says in verse 44, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly than his Sweat became like great drops of blood falling down the ground. The first area where Jesus shed blood, the blood of faithfulness, which empowers us to live and to be faithful in God's plan for our lives. When we apply the blood, it takes away the nature of Adam and the effects of Satan upon our lives that wants to, us to do our own will. You know, when Paul says that I want to do, I don't do, but the things I don't want to do, those are the things that I'm comfortable with and easily can do. But the blood of faithfulness can break that upon our lives today, that we can be faithful to the assignment of God upon our lives in Jesus' name. And we are going to apply the blood of Jesus within our lives, knowing where we are at. And God wants to direct us into His plan. He wants to show you where to go step by step, day by day, as you are faithful daily in His Word. Many of us, we have decided according to our gifting or our education or our stature where we're at. And it has hurt our families. It has hurt our children. 
that God is not here to condemn you. God is here to set you free and put you back on the path of righteousness. But we've got to identify where we are at. And therefore, we're going to start with repentance. Uh, repenting from living in disobedience, relying on our own human strength to make the decisions upon our lives. And just where you are, just agree with me as I pray together with you. So, Father God, we need you so much within our lives. Out of ourselves, Lord, we cannot do this. Forgive us, O oh God, for thinking that our plans are better than your plans. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the decisions that we have made where we were in survival mode, where we were trying to fend for ourselves. Have mercy on us, O oh God, and forgive us all our trespasses. Forgive us for being suspicious of your thoughts towards us. We know today that your plans are good towards us. They are not plans to harm us. They are plans to give us a hope and a future. And we repent right now of the selfishness where we have been living and stepping on people's heads to get ahead. Forgive us, O oh God, for not empowering others, for living in partial obedience. We surrender our wills to God. Lord, we need you. Jesus, we need you. We need you in our families. We need you in our future, God. Give us a godly perspective because we need you in our decision making that we will be able to have accurate foresight. Help us to walk worthy of you that we will be able to please you and bear fruit in everything that we do. We commit to your plan, your purpose for our lives in loving God and loving people. Not our will, but your will be done in and through us. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. We honor you, Jesus. And just where you are, you know, just close your eyes. And I want you to envision, just see Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. Make that movie in your mind. With the pressure of the world upon him, deciding that he's not going to do his own will, but he's going to do the will of the Father. And see the blood that is shed from his brow, the blood that is covering your life right now. Right now, see it absorbing all the nature of Adam, the selfishness, the lack of follow through, the disloyalty to God's word. And right now, Jesus is giving you his nature. He's placing his DNA upon your life that you are a faithful person, that you are a person that can be relied on, that you are a person that is trustworthy. Doesn't matter what comes your way. Many of you uh, are in very difficult situations right now, but the blood of faithfulness will give you the endurance that you need to be able to make it. And right now, where you are, uh, the Lord is strengthening you right now. And as you are deciding to walk in the plan and purposes of God for your life, to love God, to love people, and we do that by loving God, by loving people, and loving people by empowering them and lifting them up through the Word of God, He's giving you the strength. He might not take you out of a situation, but He's giving you the strength. There might be a storm, there might be challenges you are facing. Right now, receive the strength of God upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. And just say with me, thank you, Lord, that you have strengthened me with your might and your glorious mighty hand in Jesus' name. And just lastly, let's make a declaration of prophecy over your life today. Just say with me the following uh, words. My old self had been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but it is Christ that lives within me. When I look at the cross, I see the unconditional love the, that God has for me and for my family. When I look at the cross, I see His faithfulness. I proclaim today that my Father is steady in His allegiance towards me, in His affection towards me. He is loyal, consistent, he is reliable, he is trusted, and he will never change his mind about me. He has good thoughts towards me. And today I declare that by the blood of Jesus that was shed in Gethsemane, I too am faithful. I too am loyal. I am constant. I am reliable. I can be trusted. I will not be controlled by my human will. But today I surrender it all to my Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in me. And through me, I am not my own. I am yours forever and always in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's give a big shout of hallelujah. May God bless you through this word as you walk in the blood of faithfulness, being able to fulfill God's plan within your life in complete obedience with His perspective, knowing that it's always about people as you empower and lift up the other people around you. You will see everything that you need. God will add unto your life. God bless you.